morning po. And um, uh, praise the Lord for the privilege to once again uh, give, uh, uh, to preach this morning. And as I was uh, listening to our pastor, uh, what do you call this, uh, express his desires uh, for the ministry, I was thinking that all the more reason that each and everyone, especially uh, yung mga lalaki, to be serious uh, in, in service, and also in the Word of God. Now, I'm not saying that we're not serious, but I'm saying is, what I'm saying is uh, give more uh, time for it. And uh, who knows, maybe someday God might call us. And ang nakakalungkot po when that time comes and uh, if we're not ready. So, and uh, mas maganda po tayo handa. Any, any time that God uh, wants us, calls us to do something, that we can, we can do it and we're praying for it. And uh, the Lord will be able to use us. So, uh, so, mas maganda po, mas seryoso. Even though may mga uh, activities tayo, katulad mamaya, maglalaro tayong basketball, 7.30pm po. Uh, Mon, kayo Gomes, Sir June, 7.30pm. Uh, although may mga ganun pong uh, bagay, but uh, more time has to be given to the Word of God. And uh, the, the preaching this morning is about, uh, the title is about Biblical Friendship. And I have preached a few messages about this uh, nung kailan ba? Matagal na po, single pa po ako. Uh, crush pa lang ako ni Jalil noon. Nung mga nag po ako sa Bible school. And, uh, and then I, the Lord put it in my heart to develop those messages and uh, add, add more into it. So I would go, uh, I would go um, far from Second Corinthians muna. So we'll, we'll be reading Proverbs chapter 18. May I ask everyone to stand up? Proverbs chapter 18, verse 24. We'll be reading one verse only, but then again, we'll be reading um, uh, more verses later about friendship. Can we read this all together? Okay, Proverbs 18, 24, ready, read. A man that had friends must shew himself friendly, and there is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. Let's go to God in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for... This morning, we thank you, Lord, for uh, the reminders that we have heard and the challenges that we have heard, dear Lord, a while ago. Even the songs, dear Lord, that has uh, challenged us, the lyrics of the songs that are challenging us, dear Lord, to give you our best because you have given us your very best, dear Lord. And uh, you deserve nothing less than our best. I pray, Lord, that we will be able to do that. And um, as we study, dear Lord, about uh, uh, friendship in the Bible, dear Lord, I pray, Lord, that you help us understand more. Uh, and then help us, dear Lord, uh, in this message, not only to be able to look for friends that will help us, Lord, but be a friend ourselves that will be able to help each and every one, dear Lord, that uh, we, will, we ourselves will, be, uh, will become a friend that people will desire and a friend that will bring people closer to God, Lord. I pray, Lord, that you um, uh, uh, help us understand, help me as I preach, dear Lord, may you be the one to give me wisdom, anoint my lips, and may this be a blessing to people who will be listening. For these things I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So, uh, thank you. You may be seated. Um, I, I seldom preach uh, a topical message, so uh, please bear with me. And uh, we are going to uh, study, once again, uh, biblical friendship. And we're going to look at a few examples in the Bible, a few friendship, uh, fr uh, friendships in the Bible that we can see principles in their relationships that we can apply in our lives. So, a, a while ago, we've read Proverbs 18.24. Uh, before, uh, as a way of introduction, we can see here that the Bible says, A man that hath friends must shew himself friendly. Uh, the ver this verse says, uh, maybe uh, as a way of introduction, the first principle that we can see here is that if you want to have friends, you yourself has to become friendly. Okay? Uh, wala, wala naman po sigurong gustong kumaibigan sa'yo kung hindi ka nakipag-usap, masungit ka, ganito ganyan. Siyempre, if you want to have friends, and all of us desire to have friends, we must show ourselves to be friendly. To be a person who's capable to become a friend. And uh, being a friend is not a simple matter. Uh, this, this, sa Bible po, especially here in the book of Proverbs, when the Bible says friend or neighbor, it means that yung someone that is close to you. Uh, sometimes the Bible describes your even your relatives as friends. Yung yung mga even yung even 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 yung yung asawa or or uh, yung tao na malapit sa yun yung sinasabi dito na friend. And then when when we read the book of Proverbs, when when the book of Proverbs says neighbor, it also means friend. 
Okay, so uh, this book is full of uh, uh, principles on how we can uh, become a good friend ourselves and how we can find a friend that, can, that we can help first and foremost and a friend that also can help us. And true enough, sa ating pong buhay, without our friends, wala po tayo sa, mga ba, sa, sa lugar na kinakatayuan natin. Marami pong ginamit ang tao, ang, ng, ang Panginoon na tao sa buhay natin Uh, mga kaibigan na hindi na, na although hindi natin sila necessarily kamag-anak pero mga tao na ginamit ng Panginoon to 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 bring us to where we are now and i'm sure that you you're thinking of someone a friend that was always there when you needed them a friend that is always there to advise you through the word of god a friend that's always there was not afraid to rebuke you actually and those kinds of friends are the friends that we need in our lives and uh, having friends in our lives are a very good A benefit po sa ating buhay. Mas maganda na po yung maraming kaibigan kasi sa walang kaibigan. And uh, although sa panahon po natin, sa kultura natin, lalo na sa Pilipinas, the word kaibigan is just taken lightly. Okay? Lahat kaibigan mo, pag maayos ang sitwasyon. Pero pag hindi na, marami na tatalikod. Matitira na lang yung tunay talagang kaibigan. And then we have proven that in our lives since we started preaching about the truth of the Word of God, going against Uh, what our friends are, are really teaching, this friendship that they call has ended. And then, but then, through all this, you can see that a few remained. And it's a blessing po na, uh, it's a blessing because we've seen who are, who really are uh, ang ating tunay ng mga kaibigan. Kung sino talaga yung mapagkakatiwalaan natin when times are tough. And we need that. Although we have our family, family, we have the Word of God, we have, uh, we have the Lord Himself, the Lord uses these people in our lives para po sa atin. Uh, what are the benefits of our friends? Uh, first here is, uh, as, as a way of introduction, again, in Proverbs 27.9, it says here, Ointment and perfume rejoice the heart. So does the sweetness of a man's friend by hearty counsel. First here is, friendship gives us joy. Friendship gives us joy. And it's true. Nakita po natin dito yan sa, sa simbahan natin. Marami po uh, tayo po yung magkakaibigan. And whenever we're having fellowship, there's joy. Lagi po tayong merong uh, na, nararamdaman na galak. Uh, lalo na po, maganda dito dahil marami dito mga uh, sinatawag natin na ma, ma, maganda ang sense of humor. Marunong magpatawa. Okay, because uh, we need that. You know, uh, we, we, we go to work Monday to Friday, uh, uh, lalo na pagka mga katapusan ng buwan, maraming gagawin, grades and all these things. And minsan kailangan talaga natin mag-unwind. And, some, and God uses our friends to help us relax. Okay, not only our family, but these friends and, and brethren in the church. So the Bible says that as, as ointment and perfume rejoice the heart, so that the sweetness of a man's friend by a hearty counsel. Although, hindi lang po basta pagkakaibigan, pero yung pagkakaibigan na may kabuluhan. Ano po, yun po yung, yung binabanggit dito. Even the Apostle Paul in Philippians chapter 1, verse 3 to 5 says, I thank my God upon every remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine, for you all making requests with joy. Why? For your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now. We know, the, we know the attitude of Apostle Paul uh, when it comes to friends. He acknowledges friends. He prays for them. But the Apostle Paul, and I, uh, I want to note that he's a person who's not afraid as well to lose friends. Kaya po, whenever he writes and commends a friend and, and, and uh, talks about a friend, you know that he loves them dearly. Kasi like Dimas, right? Like, uh, sino ba yung gusto nila isama ni Barnabas? Uh, a mark. Diba? Even though they are uh, his friends or fellow workers, pag talagang alam niya na nakakabigat or nakakaabala sa, sa gawain ng Panginoon, he lets go of them. Kaya nga, uh, Apostle Paul is a good friend but he knows the, the limit of friendship. But then whenever, whenever uh, he says something like this in Philippians 1, 3-5, you know that it's true. These people brings him joy. These people that, that he's praying for, these people that, is, that are in his life. And if there's someone na may karapatang malungkot sa buhay niya, I say Apostle Paul. Why? Because he's experienced every hardship in life. He's experienced even the hardest thing that you can think of. But then he has all the reason not to rejoice. But then because of God, because of his fellow workers, and because of his friends, he is receiving joy from them. And God certainly used these people in the life of Apostle Paul para makaroon naman siya ng joy in the midst of all these troubles that he's experiencing. And that is what friends do give to us. That is what true friends, good friends give to us. They give us joy. Hindi po sila yung nagbibigay sa atin ng, 
uh, lalong pabigat. Hindi po sila yung lalo nagbibigay ng problema. But instead, they are the ones who give us joy in times that we need them. Okay? Not only do friendship gives us uh, joy, but here in Proverbs 27:17 says here, Iron sharpeneth iron, so a man sharpeneth the countenance of his friend. Friendship can help us grow as well. Not only friendship gives us joy, but friendship helps us to grow. A few things that you notice here, it says here, iron sharpened iron. And then it is now compared to a friend. Now, makikita po natin dito, first thing to consider is, yung friendship na binabanggit dito is something na magkaparehas dapat. Iron and iron. Hindi yung, kaya katulad ng message ko last Sunday, believer and believer. Hindi po believer and unbeliever. Because iron will sharpen iron, only that. Okay? So that means not only believer na pares na believer, but mas maganda kung pares din kayo ng desire, pares kayo ng goal. Ibig sabihin, kayo-kayo nagtutulungan, nag lumalago sa Panginoon. So, iron sharpen ng iron, hindi lang po basta-basta kasi maganda po na meron tayong kasiyahan, joke dito, joke dyan, lalo kami mga, kayo mga preachers, mar marami din kaming tawanan, lalo na pag si Kuya Gobs, ganado mag-joke, di ba? Lalo pag nag-basketball kami. But, the thing is, kung hindi rin kami nagtutulungan and we're not bringing each other closer to God and giving more knowledge of the Word of God to each other, our friendship is in vain. Amen. Walang kwenta. Th that's, yung sabihin, yung friendship namin, ganun lang kababaw yun, tawanan lang. Ganun lang kababaw yun, basketball lang. Yun lang yung friendship namin. But, the Bible says, friendship should help you grow in the Lord. Ibig sabihin, yung, yung, uh, yung knowledge mo sa salita ng Panginoon, yung pagmamahal mo sa Panginoon, sa ministry, lalong lumalago because of your friend. You are sharpening each other. Okay, that is how you're going to do it. That means there will be, there must be time or most of the time that you're together, ibig sabihin nagpapalakasan kayo sa Panginoon. Okay, nagpapalakasan, nag-encourage, lalo po tayong lumalago because of our friend. Here in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 24 and 25. So not only that friendship gives us joy or can help us grow, he says here in Hebrews 10, 24 and 25, and let us consider one another to provoke unto love. And to good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as ye see the day approaching. Friendship can influence us to good works. Friendship must influence us to good works. Sabi po ng Bible, and let us consider one another to provoke unto love. Ibig sabihin po, one, one uh, good friend, one sign of a good friend is a friend that will not let your love for God die down. Ibig sabihin, yung kaibigan na lalo po kayong pinag-iinit sa pagmamahal niyo sa Panginoon. Yung kaibigan na lalo, lagi tayong, lalo, tayong, uh, lalo natin minamahal ang ministry dahil sa kanila. Lagi tayong napapalalhanan. Okay? Again, uh, as we have read, friendship is a mutual thing. Hindi lang yung benefit-benefit. Ikaw din, ganun ka rin dapat sa kaibigan mo. Dapat lalo mo rin napag-iinit ang kanyang pagmamahal sa Panginoon. You, 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 uh, you provoke one another unto love and to good works. Ibig sabihin, hindi sila bad influence. They're, they influence you to doing good works. That means doing things that will glorify the Lord. Ibig sabihin, bilang sa, sa inyong pagkakaibigan, dapat yung mga nagagawa po natin ay mga bagay na nagbubigay papuri sa ating Panginoon. Okay? Um, lalo na po, whenever we were, when the time that we were younger, and look, uh, looking back at those times, marami tayong ginagawa ng walang kabuluhan. Right? Lalo na sa Pilipinas na ang hilig po natin sa kaibigan. Ang hilig natin sa best friend. Ang hilig natin sa, sa Bessie. Kung anong dami-daming tawag sa best friend. But, hindi po natin na-realize, na most of the time that we spend with these friends that we call, sa school or whatever, hindi rin naman po napapapurihan sa ang Panginoon sa ginagawa natin. I'm not saying na wag na kayo mag-enjoy, but you can enjoy while glorifying the Lord. I'm not saying na wag, wag nyo nang gawin yung mga gusto nyong gawin. Of course, the Lord wants us to enjoy what we're doing, enjoy what we have. But, dapat majority of our time or, or the things that we're doing are things that glorifies the Lord. And we should ask this, sa ating mga kaibigan, if our activity doesn't glorify the Lord, might as well not do it. If this activity glorifies the Lord, then by all means, let's do it. And that this is something that, that we should consider to provoke one another unto love and to good works. So kung isabihin, kung ang kaibigan natin, hinihila lang tayo palayo sa gawain, might as well, hindi na lang natin sila kaibigan. Ibig sabihin, kung ang kaibigan natin, uh, inaaya tayo, kaya nga imposible maging kaibigan talagang tunay ang unbeliever. Kasi hindi ka naman naayain niya na papurihan ng Panginoon. 
Meron na po ba tayong unbeliever na, tara, church tayo, sabihin pa sa'yo, no unbeliever. Tara, ano tayo, ah, basa tayo ng Bible. Wala magsasabing ganyan. Unbelievers will ask you to activities that can only gratify the flesh. And it's either you're gonna uh, uh, say no or compromise. That's your only choice. So that means, yung sabihin, maganda, magkakaibigan, tayo tayo sa simbahan. Tayo tayo po na mga nakakaintindi ng salita ng Panginoon, tayo tayo po na merong Holy Spirit sa puso para nagbabantayan. Hindi lang basta nagbabantayan, kung hindi lalo tayo natin pinapainit ang isa't isa sa Panginoon. And then, at kung meron tayong kaibigan, which is natural, na, na, may kita natin mamaya sa examples that we can see in the Bible, natural lang na magka, may times na yung kaibigan mo mahina, uh, minsan ayaw mag-attend, minsan ayaw magbasa ng Bible, nangihina ang kanyang pagmamahal sa Panginoon, then the reason why you're in their lives ay para encourage mo sila. Para naman, pag ikaw naman, sila din naman yung bubuhat sa'yo. And that is, a, that is a wonderful friendship. I'm not only talking about friends in that sense, but I'm also talking about those people who are closest to you. Ang asawa mo, ang iyong pamilya, ang mga kasamahan mo sa simbahan, ito yung goal po natin sa isa't isa. To provoke un, one another unto love and unto good works. So, uh, these are just some uh, 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 things that we can get out of friendship. And I might add true friendship. Biblical friendship. Hindi lang po yung basta-basta friendship lang. Pero po yung friendship po na talagang nakaayos sa salita ng Panginoon. This kind of friendship will give us joy, can help us grow, and can influence us unto good works. Now, all of this, as I have said, uh, uh, um, I'm talking about uh, given na ang kaibigan natin ay godly and, and Christiano. Now, we are going to look at two examples here, two kinds of friendships sa Bible. One is biblical, uh, parehas na biblical kasi nasa Bible. One is uh, glorifying the Lord and one, one uh, ibig sabihin, yung isang friendship brings someone closer to God the other one uh, brought someone down towards sin now first here uh, we can see in the book of 2 Samuel chapter 7 we're going to look at David now David is famous with a lot of people sometimes we, we, when I say David and you say Goliath David and Bathsheba David and Jonathan David and Solomon but today we're going to look at David and Nathan and, they, and, and, and see their friendship. What kind of friendship did they have? What can we copy from them? Ano yung pwede natin makuha at ma-apply sa ating buhay? Now, David was a king. Dito sa 2 Samuel 7. Uh, hindi pa siya ganun katagal na hari. And Nathan is the prophet. And we know the, the nature of that relationship. The king has to have a good relationship with the prophet because the prophet is the one telling the king what the Lord wants uh, the king to decide for the nation. Now, Nathan here is a prophet and David is the king. But at the same time, they're also friends. Here in 2 Samuel, Samuel chapter 7, verse 1, it says here, And it came to pass when the king, which is David, sat in his house, and the Lord had given him rest round about from all his enemies, that the king said unto Nathan, the prophet. We can see here that David was in his palace, nagpapahinga, and Nathan was there. Walang official business, walang, walang anuman na kailangan nila pag-usapan, Nathan was just there in fellowship. We can see here, uh, uh, first thing that we can, uh, we can see in the relationship, in friendship, there's always a time of fellowship. May time na nag, we spend time with each other. Wala namang kwenta ang pagkaibigan na hindi mo naman nakakasama. And uh, later we will go, go to that. Ang kaibigan, dapat you spend time with them. You get to know them, get to know their weakness, get to know their strength so that you can help them. So now, David was there resting in his palace. Uh, um, Nathan was there. Sabi ni David, See now, I dwell in a house of cedar, but the ark of God dwelleth within curtains. Now David is expressing his desire to Nathan. Sinasabi niya kay, kay Nathan, in, in a way na sinasabi niya, ang ganda ng tahanan ko, ang ganda ng palasyo ko, but look, uh, uh, but the ark of God dwelleth in curtains. So that means, sinasabi niya sa kanya, my desire is to build a better house for the Lord. Kasi if I am dwelling in this house, ito yung lagi ko naririnig sa Pilipinas eh, kaya kung magandang bahay ko, dapat mas maganda daw bahay ni pastor. Eh, so sa Diyos to eh, hindi naman to sa pastor. Kung maganda daw sa kanya, mas maganda daw dapat sa sa ni pastor. So, ito yung kinukote nilang verse. Hindi ko po alam kung paano nangyari. Pero yun ang nangyari. So, pero, ba, balik tayo dyan. See, now I dwell in the house of Cedar, but the ark of God dwelleth within curtains. Now, he's expressing his desire. Now, another sign of good friendship is kaya mong sabihin sa kanya yung desires mo. Okay? Desires mo for the Lord. Uh, that means, kaya mong mag-open sa kanya. You can open your heart to your friend. Okay? As I, as I have said, hindi lang ba sa kaibigan, just a person close to you. It can be your wife or, 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 or your, your, 
spouse or, or family member, kaya mo sabihin kung ano yung desire na meron ka now. David was open to Nathan. Sabi niya now, ang ganda ng bahay ko, I want a, a, a better a house for the Lord, for the ark of the Lord. And Nathan said to the king, go, do, that, do all that is in thine heart, for the Lord is with thee. Now, another sign of good friend is, pag ang desire mo naman ay tama, kaya kanya suportahan. Lalo na pag ang desire mo ay para sa Diyos. Now, David's desire here is, he wants to build a house for the ark of the Lord, which is good. Ang kanyang desire is to glorify the Lord. This is, this, this is not a selfish desire at all. So Nathan said, okay, if that's what you want, I'll support. Go do what is in thy heart, for the Lord is with thee. I know that's, uh, I know that's what the Lord put in your heart, but... We see, we see here that here in uh, verse 4, uh, verse four continue nat, uh, patuloy natin ang pagbabasa. And it came to pass that night that the word of the Lord came unto Nathan, saying, Go and tell thy servant David, Thus saith the Lord, Shalt thou build me an house for me to dwell in? Whereas I have not dwelt in any house since the time that I brought up the children of Israel out of Egypt, even to this day, but have walked in a tent and a tabernacle. In all the places wherein I have walked with all the children of Israel, spake I a word with any of the tribes of Israel whom I commanded to feed my people Israel, saying, Why build ye not me an house of cedar? Sinasabi ni, na, sabi ni ng Panginoon kay Nathan, Sabi mo kay David, Meron ba ako sinabing gawa niya ako ng bahay? Yung, yung Ark of the Lord. Simula ba nung pinalaya ko kayo sa Egypt, at dinala ko kayo dito, at nandito na tayo nga pinoprotektahan ko kayo, kahit kailan ba nagsabi ba ako or nagparinig ba ako na ba't hindi nyo ako ginagawa ng palasyo? Okay? Ibig sabihin, in, in, uh, in, uh, in, in, another, in other words, parang sinasabi niya, hindi ko naman pinapagawa. Sabihin mo nga kay David, hindi ko naman pinapagawa yan. Let's skip to verse number 12. Sabi niya, And when the days be fulfilled, and thou shalt sleep with thy fathers, ibig sabihin, sabihin mo kay David, pag mamamatay na siya, I will set up thy seed after thee, which is Solomon, which shall proceed out of thy bowels, and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build an house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. So sabi ni, sabi ni ng, pang, ng, ng Panginoon kay Nathan, Tell David, hindi ako nagpapagawa ng bahay sa kanya. But, pag mamamatay na siya, at yung kanyang successor, which we know is Solomon, siya ang, ang uh, uutusan ko na maggawa ng bahay para sa akin. Hindi ikaw. Why? Because you're a man of war. We know this. Right? It's not my will for you to build me a house. Although it's good, hindi naman nirebuke ng Panginoon na masama ang desire mo. It's a good desire, but it's not what I want you to do. And now, one thing here is, hindi po lahat ng gusto natin na magandang gawin ay kalooban ng Panginoon. Okay? Even though God's desire, David's desire here is wonderful to build a house for God, but we need to clarify if it's the will of God. Hindi basta maganda, hindi basta maganda sa pandinig, sa, pa, sa, sa paningin, or maganda pakinggan, ay kalooban ng Panginoon. Now, God used Nathan to clarify God's will in David's life. Now, this is a true friend. This is a good friend. A friend will clarify God's will in your life. Tutulungan ka ng tunay na kaibigan na makita mong maliwanag ang kalooban ng Panginoon sa buhay mo. Okay, so suportahan ka niya, but when he sees something na ito talagang kalooban ng Panginoon, kaya niyang sabihin, kaya niyang i-clarify. Kaya nga po maganda ang, kaib- ang kaibigan kung marunong sa salita ng Panginoon. Kung kayo magkakaibigan, nag-aaral ng salita ng Panginoon. Why? Kasi kaya niyong tignan ng Bible para i-clarify ang kalooban ng Panginoon. Lalo na dito po sa atin, napaka marami pong blurry things. Katulad marami na umuwi. O ba ng Panginoon umuwi ako o hindi? Now, it depends sa kaibigan mo kung ano yung i-advise. Usually, different siyang kaibigan lang yan. Di ba? Usually, kung anong, ah, kung, ah, kung hindi ka decided, ano ba talaga kalooban ng Panginoon, hindi naman masama kung uuwi ako, ano ng pamilya ko, hindi naman masama, hindi naman masama kung mag ako. So both are good things. Now, you will seek help. Ngayon, kung depende na lang sa kaibigan mo kung anong i-decide mo. Usually, okay, later we will see uh, kung ano yung uh, uh, impact ng ng, uh, ng advice ng isang kaibigan. Now, a friend will clarify God's will because it's our nature din talaga na maghanap ng advice. Okay? Kaya nga, hindi po masama maghanap ng advice sa ating mga kaibigan. But, I might suggest that we should seek advice first in the Word of God. Kung meron tayong gustong gawin or clarify sa Bible muna. Basa muna, pray muna, tignan po muna natin. Now, if we need help, we have a pastor. I, I'm not saying na ang pastor lang ang makapag-clarify ng will of God, but the nature of his office and his calling is to guide us in spiritual things. That's why he can, God can certainly use him or the leaders, the preachers, to clarify the things in your life. Now, and then after that, you can go to your friends and pray to God. Now, kung ang sinabi ng pastor, 
sinabi ng kaibigan, ng magulang, ng iyong, ng iyong asawa, hindi rin according to the word of God. Hindi mo rin, hindi ka rin uh, obliged na sundin sila. Laging babagsakling din tayo sa word of God. Kung ang sinabi ni pastor, hindi word of God, sinabi ng kaibigan mo, word of God, mas sundin mo yun. Why? Because it's the final authority. Okay? Kaya kahit na ano pa pong gawin, because here, Nathan, surely, is the, sinabi niya kay David, is the word of the Lord. Direct na sinabi ng Panginoon sa kanya. So that means, David has only to obey that. Okay? So that's what happened. Uh, kasi sabi, sabi ng Bible sa Psalms 19, 105, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Ang Bible po yung nag-guide sa atin. Ginagamit po ng Panginoon ang ibang tao para i-explain yung sinasabi ng Bible sa atin, but eventually, Bible pa rin yung nag-guide sa atin. Kaya nga po pag sinunod natin, salita ng tao, salita ng kaibigan, without confirmation from the Word of God, you're setting yourself up, up for a fall. Babagsak at babagsak ka. Marami po magaling magbigay ng advice. Lalo na ang ating mga best friend, ang galing po magbigay ng advice. Why? Because alam nila ang kiliti mo. Alam nila kung ano yung gusto mong marinig. Kasi kadalasan po sa atin, naghahanap tayo ng kaibigan na marunong lang mag-agree sa atin. Di ba yung, yung kaibigan na, ay ah, ito, lahat ng gusto ko, agrihan ako nito. Eh di sala, kinaibigan mo na lang sarili mo. Di ba? Maghanap ka ng kaibigan na marunong gumamit ng salita ng Panginoon para sabihin sa'yo kung ano talagang dapat gawin. And be humble enough like David. He's a king. Siya ang hari. If he's not humble, sa so sinabi ni Nathan sa kanya, hindi niya susundin. But be humble enough whenever someone corrects you using the word of God, yun po ang ating gagawin. Kaya nga po pag nagpapakounsel tayo, kung hindi lang binubuksan din ng Bible, kahit pastor pa yan, guard against it. Maybe maganda yung sinabi, maybe maganda yung prinsipyo na sinabi, but still, clarify it in the Word of God. And this is the only way na tayo ay magkakaroon ng uh, safety sa ating buhay. So, in friendship, there's a time of fellowship. Alright? They, they are having fellowship. But, next here in 2 Samuel, let's skip a few chapters. Chapter 12. There's also in a lot of friendship, and which is very natural, there's also a time of friction. Magkakaroon po talaga ng banggaan. Hindi po lahat ng friendship ay smooth all the way. Kahit nga po mag-asawa, hindi po smooth all the way. Magkakaroon po yun ng friction because you have differences. But here is an example po nila, David and Nathan, sabi dito sa 2 Samuel chapter 12. Now, ang nangyari po dito, hindi natin binasa, kakatapos lang po nung kasalanan ni David kay Bathsheba. And you all know the story. I don't have to tell you. Now, the chapter 11 yon. Now, dito is chapter 12. And the Lord sent Nathan unto David. Now, here's again, here is Nathan again in the life of David. And he came unto him and said unto him, There were two men in one city, the one rich and the other poor. Now, Nathan is giving him an uh, uh, illustration uh, somewhat. Verse 2, The rich man sabi niya, had exceeding many flocks and herds, but the poor man had nothing save one little ewe lamb or ewe lamb, okay, which he had bought and nourished up. Okay? Sabi niya, may mayaman, marami siyang cattle, at merong isang tao mahirap na naging isa lang yung lamb niya, na kanyang inalagaan at pinalaki. And it grew up together with him and with his children. Sa bahay pa, parang yung sila butter, pero ito yung lamb, okay? And, it, and it, it did eat of his own meat and drank of his own cup and lay his bosom and was unto him as a daughter. Parang sa panahon natin, ganyan na po natin trato ang mga pets natin. Parang anak na rin. Diba? Sa kama na rin natutulog. Uh, ang ngiti si Ate Chona. Minsan, talagang uh, kahit makagat ka pa ng aso, uwian mo sila. Talagang mahal na mahal po natin. Eh, natural lang po yun kasi mahal mo talaga eh. Kahit naman ako mahal ko yung uh, ang, ang ating mga uh, uh, pets. Okay? Uh, sabi niyo, so yun na nangyari. Verse 4, And they ca there came a traveler Nagkaroon ng bisita yung mayaman unto the rich man, and he spared to take of his own flock and of his own herd. Sabihin, nagkaroon siya ng bisita yung mayaman, ayaw niyang bawasan yung kanyang mga al alaga para iluto. Anong ginawa niya? Uh, but took the poor man's lamb and dressed it for the man that was come to him. Ngayon, ayaw niyang bawasan yung kanyang mga alaga, kinuha niya yung alaga, nag-iisang alaga nung mahirap para iserve sa kanyang, sa kanyang bisita. Okay, no notice here, bago po natin ituloy, that ang tunay na kaibigan, alam kang i-rebuke. -re i -re Alam kanya i -re hindi lang basta rebuke. Kasi ang tunay na kaibigan, kilala ka. Alam niya kung paano kang pagsabihan. Hindi lang yung basta sampal. Alam niya kung paano, he knows how to say it to you. Now Nathan here is giving it uh, slowly to David. Hindi niya basta agad kinumpronta. 
So I don't know, maybe David is a king. He can, he can command anyone to do uh, bad things to Nathan. So Nathan did this. Now, verse 5 says, And David's anger was greatly kindled against the man. Galit si David sa example ni Nathan. Siguro inisip niya, totoo ito, nangyari, na nagsusumbong lang si Nathan. And he said to Nathan, As the Lord liveth, the man that hath done this thing shall surely die, and he shall restore the lamb fourfold because he did this thing, and because he had no pity. Huli na si David. Dahil sa ginawa ni Nathan, si David na mismo nagbigay ng judgment sa sarili niya. Okay, so sabi niya, as long as the Lord liveth, dapat maparusahan niya na dapat niyang ibalik fourfold yung kinuha niya dun sa poor man. Now verse number 7 said, And Nathan said to David, ito na yung rebuke, Thou art the man. Ikaw yun. Ikaw yung marami ka ng anayarian, kinuha mo pa yung nag-iisang treasure nung ni Uriah. Okay, thus saith the Lord God of Israel, I anointed thee king over Israel, and I delivered thee out of the hand of Saul, and I gave thee thy master's house and thy master's wives into thy bosom, and gave thee the house of Israel and Judah, and if it had not been too little, I would moreover have given unto thee such and such things. Now, you notice here that Nathan is again putting it in the perspective of what God has done in your life. Kaya nga po yung tunay na kaibigan, lagi pong ang, ang kanyang advice and, and, and things that are, should be spiritual. Remind you of things that God has done in your lives. Uh, even though He's rebuking you, even though they're, they're saying what, uh, the bad things that you did, He still knows how to do it in the spiritual sense. Wherefore hast thou despised the command of the Lord to do evil in His sight? Thou hast killed Uriah, the Hittite, with the sword, and hast taken his wife to be thy wife, and hast slain him with the sword of the children of Ammon. Now therefore the sword shall never depart from thine house, because thou hast despised me and hast taken the wife of Uriah the Hittite to be thy wife. Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will raise up evil against thee out of thine own house, and I will take thy wives before thine eyes and give them unto thy neighbor, for he shall lie with thy wives in the sight of his son, of the son. For thou didst it secretly, but I will do this thing before all Israel and before the sun. Now, Nathan told David, Ano ang judgment sa'yo ng Panginoon? Because you did this thing. Now, a friend is not afraid to rebuke you. Okay? Ingat po, ta ingat po tayo sa kaibigan na marunong lang magpuri na magpuri. Na hindi po marunong magrebuke. Uh, the Bible says in Proverbs 29.5, A man flattereth his neighbor. Again, neighbor means friend. And uh, spreadeth a net for his feet. Yung tao po na, marun, na puro mabuti lang ang alam sabihin, he's setting you up for a fall. Nanguuto lang yan. Kasi hindi ka naman mabuti. Wala po sa ating mabuti. And there are always bad things in our lives. And if a friend does not remind, of, remind us of these things, this friend is not useful at all in our lives. It's better na wala na lang siya kesa inuuto ka ng inuuto. Kasi inaangat ka. He's puffing you up. And lalo ka magkakaroon ng pride sa iyong puso. But a friend who keeps pulling you down, hey, be humble, be humble, and knows how to rebuke you when you're doing bad things, that is a blessing. Yun po yung blessing. Yung tao na kaya kang rebuke. Hindi takot na kahit na ayawan mo siya, na kahit na layuan mo siya, I will tell you to your face, hindi sa ibang tao, to your face, the things that you have done and use the Bible to prove that to you. And, and dun po, dun po masusubukan ng pagkakaibigan. Right? When, when they're rebuking you. It's either the friendship will end because one of you do not, do not want to follow the Lord. Or the friendship will be strengthened kasi nadala mo siya sa Panginoon. Okay? Proverbs 27 verse 5 to 6 says, Open rebuke is better than secret love. Faithful are the wounds of a friend, but the kisses of an enemy are deceitful. The Bible says, open rebuke. Hindi po ibig sabihin na na-announce nung kaibigan mo. But it says here that a friend can rebuke you openly, na kaya niyang sabihin sa'yo kung anong dapat niyang sabihin. No sugar coating, walang nonsense will tell you what you did. Uh, whatever you did wrong. But, and and we, we notice here also that the rebuke here is also out of love. Hindi lang basta, ha, nagkamali ito, yari ito sa akin. No, that is not a good friend as well. Nirebuke ka nga, mali naman ang attitude. But, a friend rebuking you because he loves you, that is the blessing. Okay? So now here, makita natin dito sa David and Nathan, hindi po naging awkward yung friendship nila. Even though ginawa ni Nathan to. Why? Because at, uh, pag, uh, uh, tag dito, uh, ang response, response ni David sa kanya in verse 13, And David said unto Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. He humbled himself. He admitted his mistake. Ngayon, sa magkaibigan, nirebuke mo siya because what he's doing is not the will of God. At sumunod siya, at hinambol niya sarili niya, then your friendship is stronger. But, if your friend, you rebuke him because what he's doing is not the will of God, 
at nagalit siya, hindi niya sinunod. That is the end of that friendship. Because friendship must end again when truth is compromised. Hindi po dapat, it's not worth keeping. A friend is not worth keeping kung ayaw din niya sumunod sa Panginoon. Kaya nga, pag ginawa mo na yung tungkulin mo, sinabi mo na, ginamit mo na yung Bible, ayaw pa sumunod, that's it. You pray for them, you still love them, but the friendship has to change. Kasi pag hindi rin nagbago yung trato mo, wala rin kayong, walang nagbago sa inyong relasyon, parang inaayunan mo lang. Tama? Kaya nga po dito sa simbahan natin, nagkaroon po tayo ng mga uh, uh, things or, or, or mga sitwasyon na may mga tao na ayaw sumunod sa kalooban ng Panginoon. Many times. Kaya nga lagi tayo nire-remind ng, ng ating pastor, ay, dapat baguhin niyo yung trato niyo. You have to show them that we don't agree with what they're doing. Kasi kung ganun lang din, sa simbahan, na pagsabihan, na disiplina, pagdating sa work, oh, good morning, joke, joke, joke pa rin, parang hindi rin nila mararamdaman yun. Lalo pa silang tinulungan na pagpatuloy yung kanilang mali. But, if you have done what you can, you've shown them what they have done wrong, you, can, you have to distance yourself and wait for them to join you again in doing the will of God. That is a true friend. Open rebuke is better than secret love. Kaya ingat po tayo sa marunong, sa mahilig mang uto. Ang bait, mabait ka naman eh. Tama lang yan. Talagang hindi lang nila naiintindihan. Ah, hindi nalalaman ang nararamdaman mo. Ako, kilala kita. Maganda ang puso mo. Iwanan mo na yun. That is, uh, uh, ayun, tawag dito, dila yun. Ni Satanas. Okay? That's not from God. Why? Because if it's clearly na against sa Panginoon, against the Word of God, ang ginagawa mo at sinangayunan ka pa, hindi po tunay na kaibigan yan. Mamaya, may kita po natin kung anong klaseng kaibigan yan. Now, True biblical friendship, may fellowship, may time of fellowship, may time of friction. Hindi ka, ta, hindi ka, hindi siya takot na na rebuke ka. And may kita po natin dito. Let's skip to verse 24. Same chapter. Hindi naging awkward yung kanilang pagkaibigan eh. Sabi sa verse 24, and David comforted Bathsheba. Fast forward tayo. Namatay na yung anak, all of these things. And then, uh, tapos na magluksa si David, si Bathsheba naman na nagluksa. And uh, asawa na niya, but she was life and wife and went in unto her and lay with her and she bare a son and he called his name Solomon and the Lord loved him. Okay, nakaanak again sila ni Bathsheba named Solomon. Sinong unang tinawag ni David? And he sent by the hand of Nathan the prophet and he called his name Jedidiah because of the Lord. It's another name of Solomon. Now, actually, no nakaroon sila ng anak ni Bathsheba, una niya pang gusto sabihan si Nathan. Okay, and then a side note here in First Chronicles three verse five, and these were born unto him in Jerusalem. Eto yung mga anak nila na Bathsheba, Shimea, and Shobab, and his third son he even named after Nathan and Solomon. Okay, now friendship po nila after this time of friction hindi po nagbago. Why? Because first David humbled himself, and second hindi po natakot si Nathan in rebuke, at and then they both. Uh, decided to follow the Lord in their lives. Okay? Not only friendship has a time of fellowship or friction, and also friendship needs to have faithfulness. Yung tunay po na kaibigan ay may faithful. Uh, Proverbs 17, 17 says, A friend loveth at all times, and a brother born for adversity. Sa buhay po ni David and Nathan, even in the life, uh, fast forward po ulit tayo sa 1 Kings chapter 5. Hindi na po natin babasahin mahabang story. Kikwento ko na lang po. This is now the end of the life of David. Now, si Nathan malakas pa, pero si David pawala na. So now, uh, kailangan ng magpalit. Kailangan na magkaroon ng new king. Kaso nga po, ang sitwasyon ay napupunta kay ang throne kay buwan sa 1 Kings chapter 5, Adonijah, tama ba? O, hindi naman siya. 1 Kings chapter 5. E, verse 2? 3. Okay, dito ko na lang titignan. Pasensya na po, hindi ko na note. Okay, I'll, I'll just tell you, sorry, wag na, wag na po natin basahin. Now, it says here that, uh, ang nangyari po, now, uh, I, I'm sure it's Adonijah, it's, 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 the throne was, was, is supposed to be given to Solomon, yun ang pangako ni David. Kaso nga lang, uh, yung sitwasyon na pupunta sa iba. Ngayon, ang ginawa ni, ni Nathan, tinulungan niya si Bathsheba, sabi niya, sige, tulungan kita, we have to remind David na kay Solomon na pupunta ang throne. So now, uh, uh, Nathan now is serving Bathsheba. Now, but she, uh, in advice na si Bathsheba, na pumunta kay David and remind him, and then the Lord worked, and then, and, and to make the long story short, and napun, napunta po ang uh, throne kay uh, Solomon. 
And then, even when David died, we see here that yung si Nathan po, hindi pa rin po nawala in service to Solomon. Tapos niya pong paglingkuran si David, now is pinaglilingkuran naman niya, the new king, Solomon, ang anak po ni David. Because we have read that uh, Nathan loves Solomon. Now, a true friend, kahit na po sa, throughout their lives, mamatay na or whatever, faithful pa rin po yan. Kaibigan pa rin, hindi po mawawala. Kaya nga po kahit yung kanyang anak na si Solomon, um, si nerve pa rin ni Nathan. And, and, and it's some, something here na makita natin na uh, Solomon, Solomon had a son, Rehoboam, which through Rehoboam's uh, line, Joseph, the earthly father of Christ, or, or yung, yung nagpalaki sa kanya, will be born. And through the son of David that he named after Nathan, Mary, the earthly mother of Christ, will be born. Now, through this friendship of Jonathan and David, simula pa lang po sa uh, uh, una pa lang naging king si David, nandun na siya. Nagkaroon po ng, ng, sa buhay ni David ng pagkakamali, nandun si Nathan para i-rebuke siya. Hanggang namatay po si David, si Nathan patuloy po pinaglingkuran ng kanyang anak. This is what, this is what you call a true friend. Tunay, tunay kang paglilingkuran at, at, at magiging faithful sa'yo even to the end of your life. And we can see that kind of loyalty throughout the Bible. David and Jonathan had the same relationship. Ruth's loyalty to Naomi is the same. Abraham's protection of Lot is the same thing. Makita po natin, a true friend in the Bible is loyal. And, and, and the, the ultimate example of a friend is the Lord Jesus Christ Himself, who can sacrifice and can love unconditionally and will continue loving you whatever happens. But, I note again, will never condone the bad things that you're doing. Okay, that is a true friend. Now, I hope and I, fr- uh, and I, friend, I, hope and I pray now, now, as we go through the lives of David and Nathan, naisip po natin ang ating mga kaibigan or naisip natin ang sarili natin, ganito ba akong klaseng kaibigan sa aking kaibigan? If not, Panginoon, sana gawin niyo po akong ganito to be able to help. And not here, an- another example, and, and as the end of our message, 2 Samuel chapter 13, verse 1 to 5. Now, let's look at the friendship of Amnon and Jonadab. And it came to pass, 2 Samuel 13, 1. After this, that Absalom, the son of David, had a fair sister. Fair means beautiful, pretty, whose name was Tamar. And Amnon, the son of David, loved her. We see here that Tamar is the half-sister of Amnon. Uh, kapatid ni Amnon si, si, ba? si Absalom and uh, kapatid ni Absalom si Tamar. So they are half, uh, he, uh, uh, Tamar is Amnon's half-sister. But the Bible says here that he loved his Half sister, and of course, kung alam natin historia, he didn't really love her. He was just really lusting after her. Okay, uh, alam niya na malay. So, and Amnon was so vexed. Hindi lang niya gusto. Sabi dito is so vexed that he fell sick for his sister Tamar. Okay, siguro ewo ko may akarilit sa atin dito. Whatever time in your life, meron ka talaga na crush. Gusto gusto mo talaga na hindi ka titigil hangat di mo na kwaing number, hindi mo na kakausap. Sa mga nakapag camp, nakapag camp na yan. Na, hindi ka tal- na ang goal mo na lang sa camp, hindi na makinig, magkaroon lang ng chance na makausap si sister. Kaya ito yung nararamdaman niya. That he was so vexed. Sabi niya, he fell sick. That, that's what the Bible says for his sister Tamar. For she was a virgin. Now, he doesn't really love her. He was just really lusting after her. And Amnon thought it hard for him to do anything to her. Now, although gusto niya, gustong gusto niya, alam niya na wala siyang magagawa. Why? Because he's the king's son. Alam niya yun, hindi niya kailangan gawin. Uh, maraming ibang babae siyang pwede makuha. Now, sabi niya, hindi ko kaya. It's hard for me to do it. I will not do it. Okay, the Bible, the Bible is clear that it taught it hard for him to do anything to her. Okay, kaya po sa ating buhay, meron temptation, meron po mga bagay na, na hina-offer sa atin ang, ang jablo. But then again, hindi natin siya gagawin. Why? Because we know it's wrong. And going back to the example kanina, madali lang kasi yung pag natin ng tama at mali, madaling tanggihin yung mali. Pero, pag... Pagka ang desisyon natin is tama at mukhang tama, yun yung medyo mahirap. Doon natin kailangan talaga ng prayer, Bible reading, advice, a multitude of counselor, yun ang mahirap. Ngayon, uh, now let's, let's, let's just put that in that example. Kung ikaw ang nandun sa ganung kalagayan, diferensyang counselor yan. Diferensya kung sinong kakausapin mo. Pag malungkot ka, pag down ka sa buhay mo, napalapit ka sa karnal, tapos. Pag malungkot ka, pag down ka sa buhay mo, napalapit ka sa spiritual, praise the Lord. Diba? Dadaling kanya sa Panginoon. But, kaya nga po, maganda po, lagi tayong nakalapit sa mga spiritual. But, si Amnon dito, itong desisyon niya eh. Will I act upon my desire or not? 
Now, it's hard for me to do it. Now, this made the difference. Ver next verse. But Amnon had a friend whose name was Jonadab, the son of Shimea, David's brother, and Jonadab was a very subtle man. Napalapit sa pinsan. And malas lang na ang kanyang pinsan ay uh, tuso. Okay, anong sabi, ni, anong sabi ni Jonadab sa kanya, kay Amnon? And he said unto him, Why art thou, being the king's son, lean from day to day? Will thou not tell me? Sabi niya, anak ka ng hari, ba't ka, naglulung, ba't ka nalulungkot? Bakit ganyan ka? You have all the things in this world you can have. Ba't ka nalulungkot? Pwede ba sabihin mo sa akin? And Amnon said, ito yung pagkakamali niya, inopen niya ang kanyang desire sa taong masama. I love Tamar, my brother Absalom's sister. Kaya nga dapat ingat din po tayo sa pag-share at pag-open. Hindi ka basta-basta nag-open sa kung kani-kanino. Mag-open ka sa mga taong alam mo na kaya ang pangalagaan ng sinabi mo at alam mo na kaya kanyang advice na according to word of God. And he said um and Jonadab said unto him, ito yung kanyang napakagandang payo. Lay thee down on thy bed. Higa ka sa kwarto mo. And magpanggap kang may sakit. And make thyself sick. At pagdating ni David, Tagalogin natin, mas maganda kasi. Pag, ano eh. Pagdating ni David, sabihin mo sa kanya, Dad, pwede bang tawagin mo si Tamar, siya yung mag-alaga sa akin? Pagluto niya ako dito, at dito na niya iluto sa harapan ko para makita ko. Okay? Yun yun yung sinabi niya. And then after that, paalisin mo ang iyong mga servants and then do what you want to do with Tamar. Yun yung kanyang advice. Diferensyang kaibigan, mga kapatid. It's, it's hard for me to do this bad thing, kaso nga lang, patay, mali ang kaibigan. It's hard for me to do this sin kasi alam patay. You had a very bad friend. Kaya nga po kapatid, kasabi po sa 1 Corinthians 15:33, be not deceived. Evil communication corrupt good manners. Kahit na ano pang naituro sa iyo ng magulang mo sa simbahan, lumaki sa, sa, sa word of God, marami kang alam na prinsipyo, pag mali ang iyong kaibigan, patay ka rin. He will still bring you away from the Word of God. Ilalayo ka pa rin sa ministry. Ilalayo ka pa rin sa pagmamahal mo sa Panginoon. This is what, uh, this is what um, Jonadab did to Amnon. And, to, uh, and makita po natin yung resulta ng kasalanan ni Amnon. Uh, para po lang hindi natin basahin, ni rape ni Amnon si Tamar. Sinunod niya yung advice nitong evil man na si Jonadab. After that, nagalit si Absalom. Siyempre, ni rape yung kapatid niya. And when Absalom got, uh, uh, got angry, he did... Uh, Pinatay ba niya? Yeah, he, he killed uh, jo, uh, Amnon. Now, dahil pinatay niya, nagalit ngayon si David kay Absalom. Nagkaroon sila ngayon ng away and the, and the kingdom was divided between uh, uh, Absalom and David. Why? Because of this one sin that Amnon did. Why did he do it? Because of this one friend that told him to do it. That's why, different siyang kaibigan lang po. And after that, almost nakuha po ang, ang kingdom kay David. Although the Lord intervened and David was still able to retain the throne. But, uh, uh, para, para lang po, just to drive home the point, hindi lang din ikaw ang maapektuhan kasi sa mga masama mong desisyon. Kaya nga po, ingat tayo. Kaya, nga, kaya, kaya kailangan tayo nag-iingat sa kaibigan, sa ginagawa natin. Why? Because people will be affected. And in the case of Amnon, the whole kingdom was affected. Because of what he did. Because of what Jonadab told him to do. The, the Bible says again, be not deceived. Be not deceived. Why? Evil communications corrupt good manners. That's why we have to be uh, wise and choose our friends carefully. Proverbs chapter 13, verse 20. He that walketh with wise men shall be wise, but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. Now, I, I know we have friends here. And I know you yourself consider your you consider yourself as a good friend. But, looking at the Word of God, reading the book of Proverbs, if you have time, read this book. Reading the book of Proverbs, ganun ba tayo yung klaseng kaibigan sa ating mga kaibigan? Are we a person who, in the time of need ng ating kaibigan, kaya natin dalen sa Panginoon? Kaya natin gamitin ng Bible para maitayo sila at mailapit sa Panginoon? Kung hindi po tayo ganun klaseng kaibigan, sana po yun ang i-desire natin, maging ganun klase tayong kaibigan. Maging kaibigan tayo na alam natin ang salita ng Panginoon at alam natin tulungan natin kaibigan. So in return, you can have that kind of friend as well. Kaya nga po mga kapatid, it, it is very vital. Nagawin po natin ito. Why? Our church has a lot of desires. Our pastor has, has opened his heart for his uh, 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 vision na gagawin natin. If we ourselves are not ready for this, then wala po mangyayari. If we are uh, uh, in a relationship with people, 
Wala tayo, meron tayong mga kaibigan and God is not in the center of that relationship. Nothing will happen in that kind of friendship. Kaya nga po, minsan ang ang, ang corny, minsan na, nakakornyan ako sabi natin, ang corny naman kasi mag-fellowship lang kailangan pa mag-devotion. Why not? 'Di ba? Eh yung mga evangelical nga, yung mga hallelujah, meron pa silang mga small group, cell group, cell group na kahit na nagpapaiyak, iyakan lang naman sila dun. But they have it in their desires na unahin ang salita ng Panginoon bago kung ano mang gagawin nila magkakaibigan. Talo tayo dun. Pagka tayo kainan, kainan lang. Pagdating, kain na. Hindi na po natin inisip, malungkot nga, baka nakalimutan pa natin magpray. Di ba? It has, God has to be in the center of everything. Kahit po sa pagkakaibigan lang natin, okay, magsasama-sama tayo, we have to keep that in mind. Whatever we're doing, let's glorify God, let's help each other, bring each other closer to God. Dun po ang, dun po tayo, that's the only way we can have a strong church that can support the vision of, that God has given to our pastor and that it can become a reality. Okay, so, so, so let's, let's uh, be conscious. Are you a good friend? Are you a friend that is biblical? Or according to the Bible? And do you have friends that are like that? And meron ba tayong kaibigan na hindi ganun? Napagsabihan mo na ba? O baka na pinagsasabihan mo through other people? Pagsabihan mo siya, direkta. Ngayon kung hindi nakinig, kapatid, you have to make that decision to end the friendship. Because friendship that compromises the Word of God is not a good friendship at all. Kaya nga po sana, ganun pong gawin natin. You have friends. Meron tayong mga kaibigan na unbeliever. Once and for all, talk to them. Ito ang, ito ang Bible. Kailangan mo ang Panginoon. You're lost in your sin. Uh, you're not glorifying God in your life. You have to repent. You have to put your faith in Christ. I'm praying na gagawin mo itong decision sa buhay mo. And until and unless you do that, I, I'm, I'm sorry, our friendship, hindi na magiging, ganun, hindi na magiging ganito kaklose ang friendship natin. Why? Because... I'm showing you my desire na gusto ko itong luma- ma- ma- madala sa Panginoon. Kaso nga lang, sinayran na natin, sinabi na natin, accept Christ, repent of your sins, tapos join, join pa rin. Wala pa mangyayari. It is, uh, it's sending a mixed message. We have to learn how to separate. Tell them the truth, tell them what they have to do, and separate if they don't want to decide. I'm, I'm, I'm sure Nathan will end that relationship with David if David didn't humble himself. But praise the Lord, David humbled himself because it has been clear that it's the Lord, the, the word of the Lord, na sinasabi ni Nathan. And um, sana po naging tulong ito. Just a few principles of biblical friendship. Let us uh, let allow me to pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this uh, short message and a reminder, dear Lord, that um, we ourselves have to be a good friend, dear Lord, and uh, kami po yung maging tao na uh, magiging blessing po sa amin kaibigan. And hope and hope. Hopefully, Panginoon, na mag- makatagpo rin po kami mga kaibigan na maging blessing po sa aming buhay na mailalapit po kami sa iyo, Panginoon. And help us as we uh, go through today and sa mga gagawin po namin, kayo po na mapapurihan, Panginoon. Dalangin sa pangalan ni Jesus.